Hello, welcome to the 11th annual Seeds of Discovery White Coat uh, Ceremony. We have uh, a great representation from across the United States and actually around the world. Um, it's exciting that you've all decided to start your journey um, becoming a scientist here at Case Western Reserve University. Um, you come from uh, many great un uh, universities and institutions around the world. I'm Marvin Neiman, the Vice Dean for uh, Graduate Education. It's an honor for me to host the Seeds of Discovery uh, ceremony again this year. Uh, white coat ceremonies are a long-standing tradition in the medical uh, school uh, in, for MD programs. Um, in contrast, very few graduate programs have a white coat ceremony. My predecessor, uh, Dr. Paul McDonald, started this uh, 11 years ago, and it's really grown into a great tradition, and you can just see the number of people here. It's just really terrific. Um, we are lucky that the, the dean, the department chairs, um, the, the faculty, and our program directors all look forward to this event each year, so it's really nice. Uh, dean Gerson sends his congratulations, and, and unfortunately, he was pulled away at the last minute. Um, I'd like to ask the chairs, basic science chairs, just to stand up, just to recognize, just uh, if you could just stand up, turn around, wave. Um, these are the chairs of the basic science departments. These are the people who run the programs and lead the faculty and lead our, our great research. And then the program directors, these faculty are the leaders of our programs. They uh, you know, work with, right now they're working with everyone to find their rotations and find the labs that they're going to do. And if you could stand, that'd be great. So we're lucky to have this, this level of engagement um, at the, at the um, School of Medicine from our training programs. It really is. Um, I think we're doing really cool things in the graduate education workshop, but I'm not um, pretending I'm not biased. <laughs> Before we start, I thought this would be fun. I'm looking at all these people. I've got a camera. <laughs> Why not? All right, how are we going to do this? Selfie. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Don't drop the phone. There we go. All right. All right, let's make it a little. Yeah. There we go. All right, we'll go this side. I want everybody involved, right? And one for over there. Awesome. You've done this before, right? My social media presence, yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, so I, as I said, this, this began 11 years ago. And this is really a fantastic tradition to kick off your careers. And I have to say, one, my personal satisfaction, one of the most exciting things about this job, first as running my own lab and then continuing to do that, but, but as a program director and then now as the vice dean, is to watch the amount of growth that people come in when they start the program thinking they know what they want to do. Some have no clue. They fumble around, figure it out, and they really, at the end, is just really, the transformation is just remarkable. And that's really what gets me going. Um, there's, uh, Simon Senek has a book, and some of you may have uh, heard it. It's called Finding Your Why, and then when you find your why, that's what you're doing, what you're supposed to do. It's not how you do it. It's, it's why you're doing something. And, and I think, for me, this is it. And it really is satisfying to, to see the growth. Um, I think about this a bit, and I think, for the students, you are be about to become the they. And what do I mean by that? You hear people all the time, why don't they do this? Why don't they design this? Why don't they figure out a cure for this? Why don't they do this? And you guys are about to become the they. And it's, you know, it's kind of cool. It's very exciting. Also, a bit of big, it's a big challenge. Um, many of you, through orientations and, well, it started last spring when you guys were coming to visit and decide whether Case Western was the place for you to come. You started making connections, and those connections grew a little bit this summer. And as you guys have been here, you're making more connections as you're meeting your new lab mates, the, um, the older students and the faculty. And these connections are going to be your um, support networks to help you get through the PhD. They're going to become lifelong friends. And it's, you know, Really, um, it's, I think that's the best part about doing science. I have friends that I met 20 years ago. We see each other a few, couple times a year, and we're all over the world, and it's just a really a, li a lifelong uh, friendships. So on behalf of Case Western Reserve School of Medicine, um, I welcome you as, all as our newest colleagues. As you move through the program, you'll notice, if you haven't already, that we have a wide range of PhD programs at Case Western Reserve. In fact, we have 17, to be precise. 
Um, these 17 programs have 400, uh, a little over 400 PhD students. Um, they're, pers they're pursuing PhDs in a wide range of fields, informatics, structural biology, cancer biology, immunology, neuroscience, cardiovascular disease. In addition to our PhD programs, we have 18 master's programs that have about 1,000 students in them. So you've joined an incredible network of scholars, of fellow students, faculty, and um, uh, program leaders. You've also joined a city that's a major driver, or healthcare is a major driver of the economy here in Cleveland. Um, the School of Medicine comprises five campuses. We've got the main medical school here, but we also have uh, Cleveland, uh, the Cleveland Clinic as part of our operation, Metro Health Medical Center. University Hospitals, which is just across the street, and then down the street we have the Lewis Stokes Cleveland VA Medical Center. We have students at all of those places, and so again, it's a vast network, and there's many opportunities. Each of these places has their unique strengths, and I really look forward to seeing what all of you bring and wherever you decide to do the PhD where you do that. So now for the white coats. Um, we'll start with the biomedical engineering uh, 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 program. I think bioengineering, so Bob Kirsch, you can come, Bob is the uh, program, or is the uh, chair, he is going to announce, um, and uh, Dr. Stathis Karanathis is going to hand out the white, is going to introduce the white coats. So I think biomedical engineering is a fascinating world. I always learn so much from my bioengineering colleagues. So for those not familiar, bio en biomedical engineering, at least in my simplified notion, is they make new devices, new drug delivery systems, and really at the interface between humans and machines. So I think it's really fascinating. So to introduce those, Dr. Kirsch. Yep. Thank you, Marvin. Congratulations to all of our, our new students joining us today. I'll just say one thing about biomedical engineering. We apply engineering principles to solve problems in medicine and biology. More than just devices, Marvin. <laughs> okay, so they're lined up now. Our first student is Eunate Alzaga from the University of Rochester. Next is Francine Graham from the University of Notre Dame. I'm not here. Oh. Not on my list. Jonathan Huff from West Virginia University. Shi Hong Hua from the University of Florida. Lock in Irish from Case Western Reserve University. <laughs> Maya Jenks from the University of Virginia. Rai Fang Jin from Carnegie Mellon University.
Um, Ziling Lua from Arizona State University. Nope. Um, Molly Ochoko from Case Western Reserve University. track here. Nicholas Nazak from Case Western Reserve University. Lalu Agunake from Johns Hopkins University. <laughs> Lily Spire from Trine University. Rebecca Stinson from Bucknell University. <laughs> Madeline Tincher. Georgia Institute of Technology. <laughs> Costas Tsipsis from Concordia University. Wong, Case Western Reserve University. <laughs> and Jiashin Zhou from the University of Southern California. Again, good luck to all and thank you. Thank you, Dr. Kirsch. So the next program is the uh, Biomedical Sciences Training Program, and this is our Umbrella admission, Admissions Program. Uh, it feeds into 11 of our PhD programs. I know some of our guests are asking, what does that mean? So students, I'm going to help you out for the next grad, uh, uh, family gathering, I'll explain it. So let's say someone's interested in cancer research. 
there are many aspects of, of cancer research, um, and each has their own approach. So, for example, there's the genetics of cancer. Right? Someone may be interested in developing new therapeutics to cancer, and they may choose pharmacology. Um, you could also use biochemistry or biophysics to understand the molecular machines involved in, in how a cancer cell grows. You could also be interested in the population, how cancer is, is manifest through a population. So you can see this um, truly reflects the interdisciplinary, interdisciplinary nature of modern science and how we do it. So the idea behind the biomedical sciences training programs come in undifferentiated and sample where they want to go and how they want to do that and really marry the topic with the approach with the mentor that they choose. And so it's really a, a lot of uh, a flexibility in these programs. So um, to my uh, right here is uh, Dr. David Ladowski. Dave is the um, BSDP program director. He's in this, just finished his first year and I think he's doing an outstanding job. So thank you, Dave. Okay. So first we have uh, Kaylin Bennett from University of Mount Union. Dylan Bahanik uh, from Cleveland State University. Elizabeth Bryson from Baldwin Wallace University. Tony Caputo from Cleveland State University. Important stuff. Uh, Sarah, Sarah Cook, University of Michigan. Xiaoxing Choi, Shanghai University. Uh, Paulo Elgara Grandes. from the New Jersey Institute of Technology. Sorry. Messed up. Mm -hmm. 
Alexander Epp from Hillsdale College. William Greger from Miami University. <laughs> Eliza Hayes, Western Kentucky University. Alexis Heath from Bowling Green State University. Grace Hine, Dickinson College. Isabel Held, Miami University. Derek Host, Sunny University at Buffalo. Uh, Brooke Urasis, Santa Clara University. Claire Capel from University of Tennessee. Sophia Khan, University of South Florida. Grace Hine, Dickinson College. 
where I did that. There is no other grace. Carlson? Yeah. Sorry. Grace Carlson. College of St. Scholastica. Karthik Lakota, Tufts University. <laughs> Katie Lemmer, University of Akron. Kaylin Leepak, Florida Institute of Technology. Tristan Lewis, University of Georgia. <laughs> Rushan Lee. Johns Hopkins University. <laughs> Haibei Lin, Beijing University of Chemical and Technology. Mingda Liu, University of Georgia. Nadia Martin, Mary Baldwin University. <laughs> Ashomathy Mullen, Wayne State University. Dali Namisio, New York University.
Lisa Nicholson, Dort University. Caitlin O'Hare, Cornell University. Michelle Raymond, Allegheny College. Emma Scritchfield, Wittenberg University. Uh, Michelle Raymond, Allegheny College, do we? <laughs> Lost my place, sorry. Amanda Serapilia, St. Vincent College. Jason Soon, Southern University of Science and Technology. Uh, Jacqueline Swigress, Ohio State University. Narbaya Ita Vagala, Sardar Patel University. Hannah Wargo, Case Western Reserve University. Patrick Wood, the College of Worcester. Worcester. 
Jingling Wu, Johns Hopkins University. Rana Zier, Oberlin College. Okay. Oh, well done, Dave. No, you're, no, he's good. He's good. We're good. <laughs> so uh, um, I'd like to invite Dr. Alex Wong, the director of our medical scientist uh, training program. So the medical scientist training program is our combined MD-PhD program. So these future physician scientists, they do two years of medical school, then they do the PhD. Then they return to medical school for the last two years. Um, this, in, this group of individuals are at the, at the end of their degree are just uniquely qualified to be at the interface of cutting edge research and, and patient care. Um, the PhD programs they join are all of the programs that we've talked about, biochemistry, cell biology, et cetera. So it's a, a really a unique program and uh, really well trained at the end. We have Olabukla Abiona from University of Maryland, Baltimore County. <laughs> Henek Bifakadu, Carleton University, or Carleton College, I'm sorry. Indrani Das, Harvard College. Claire Fritz. Case Western Reserve University. Uh, Jacob Ingber, Harvard University. Christina McCaskill, University of Richmond. Oh, sorry, Case Western Reserve University. That's right. <laughs> Gotta get it right. <laughs> Mark Say Mamade Jaluli, University of Richmond. Brendan Sheehan, Oberlin College.
Polomina Schutis, University of California, Berkeley. Priyana Singh, Johns Hopkins University. <laughs> Jaehan Yu, Stony Brook University. Apollonia, University of Pittsburgh. So the next program is the Molecular Medicine Program. Uh, the Molecular Re Medicine Program is housed at the Learner Research Institute at the Cleveland Clinic. Uh, the director is Dr. Jonathan Smith. Uh, I say the distinguishing feature of this program is it's directly tied to clinical and translational uh, impact. Everyone in the program has a physician on their advisory committee that specializes in their disease of interest. And this allows people who even at the basic, most basic fundamental science level to have an understanding of uh, how that fits into the greater context of disease. Good job. <laughs> All, right. All right. So for, we have Emily um, Atwood from Case Western Reserve University. Den, University of Washington. Matthew Godwin, Cleveland Clinic Learner College of Medicine. <laughs> Thank you. Janelle Holloway, University of California, Los Angeles. Courtney Jennings, Case Western Reserve University. <laughs> Dahlia Khalife, Case Western Reserve University. Nandini Rajaram Siva, 
Sri Ramachandra Medical College. David Shapiro, Cleveland State University. <laughs> Sherry Sheikh. Cleveland Clinic Learner College of Medicine. <laughs> Suba Singh, Boston University. Yujo Atu, University of Houston. Ting Zhang, University of Southern California. So the, the next set of programs is from the Department of Populative, Population and Quantitative Health Sciences. Uh, the department, this department has three PhD programs, Epidemiology and Biostatistics, Biomedical and Health Informatics, and Clinical and Translational Science. These programs focus on the uh, population-based health, including social determinants of health and other public uh, health-related uh, topics. And given the analytical nature of these programs, there's a large amount of interface with the other PhD programs. A lot of these uh, faculty and part of this program are involved in genetics and other programs. So uh, Dr. Uh, Jonathan Haynes is here to uh, give the white coats. First, we have um, Ming-Wan Lee, University of Southern California. Christian Marada, Marwadi University. Those individuals were from the Biomedical and Health Informatics PhD program. The Clinical and Translational Science PhD program, uh, Mary Garrity from Case Western wow. Reserve University. Uh, 
Ikaze Samita, Case Western Reserve University. Chenju Liu from Case Western Reserve University. And she's from the Epidemi and Bio, uh, Epidemiology and Biostatistics Program. That concludes the white coats. Um, for some round of applause for everyone. So before we close, I, I'd like to recognize the Graduate Education Office staff for all their help in organizing this event. I basically showed up. Um, and especially to Milana Bay, who um, is the driver of this event and uh, pulls it all together. Um, it is a tradition of the uh, Seeds of Discovery. It started with the second year, uh, the second time doing it, and now it's the tradition that a second year student gives the closing remarks. And this is, um, Annalise Hudson is a, a PhD student in uh, Dr. Mears' lab in the pharmacology program, and she was in your seat last year, and so she has prepared some comments. Hi everybody, um, I'm Annalise and I'm a second year PhD student. I just want to congratulate you all on starting the program and earning your white coats. Um, you should be incredibly proud of yourselves as it's not an easy road to get here. Um, I recall my first interviewer for this program asked how I dealt with failure, which is a pretty pessimistic interview question. Uh, but in research, failure isn't the end, it's only the beginning. And while that may be hard to reconcile when you're surrounded by very high achievers, um, I'd like to warn you now that things aren't going to always work how you planned. So it's important to remember why you were chosen to be here. You are here because you're passionate. Not everyone is willing to check in on the weekends for a 10-day protocol. You are here because you're wildly curious. Those 16 tabs of articles open on Google Chrome that you want to read but haven't had the time to, uh, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> also, give your computer a break. Um, you are here because you're accomplished. Maybe you have a master's degree. Maybe you've done some really cool research. Maybe you know how to juggle. Maybe you know 100 digits of pi. Whatever um, you put your efforts towards, you had to work hard and remain determined uh, even when things went awry. You are here because you offer insight in a way that nobody else can. Your life experiences have shaped you into a wonderful person, and those same experiences will turn you into a masterful scientist with a little bit of help from your peers and mentors. You're also here because you like science, I hope. And I think we can agree that one of the joys of science is that there's always something new. So my first piece of advice, take it or leave it, um, is to take note of when things amaze you. Uh, this week, I went solo on an electron microscope for the first time, and it blows my mind that we can see characteristics of individual proteins by using a microscope. Naturally, I had to share the thrill with my sister. Uh, she works in business and had no idea what I sent her. <laughs> so uh, I was just really proud of the pictures that I had taken, so I shared them on her, it was, it was a wash, but that's okay. Uh, <laughs> Last week, I ran an enzyme assay that turns colors when the enzymes are active. I took the high school student in my lab along for the ride because I was excited to tell her all about how it works. Um, just yesterday, I read an article that had me frantically scribbling on sticky notes because I felt so inspired. So now I encourage you not to deprive yourself of celebrating the little wins. Those moments can become mundane very quickly if you allow them to. So pause for a second and take in the magic of scientific discovery. 
My next suggestion for you is to take advantage of this community beyond the science. Believe it or not, there is more to this program than learning the Krebs cycle for the sixth time or doing yet another RNA purification. There's so much to learn from talking to people, whether that's your mentor or your classmates or even the undergrads in your lab. One minute you might be troubleshooting your experiment, the next you might be going to a Zumba class with people in your department happens. Uh, they won't all be comfortable experiences, however. So in troubleshooting with a friend, you may realize that you forgot to add any reagent and you just wasted three days on an experiment. Uh, or you might have an odd interaction with someone that you admire because you got flustered asking your question. It happens. Uh, but by getting out of your comfort zone, you'll find that there are so many opportunities to learn and form friendships and branch out your expertise if you only look around. In doing this, I've been humbled many times in the last year. Uh, the world is big and I just don't know everything, which is annoying because I like to know everything. But I keep my mind open to criticism and new ideas and I suggest that you do too. Uh, we have a fun little legacy here at Case and that involves an open mind and Einstein. Now, if you paid attention in physics class, you may have heard of Mickelson and Morley. Uh, if you didn't, I am guilty. I'll offer you a quick history lesson. Mickelson and Morley is not just a restaurant downstairs. Uh, they were scientists back when Case Institute of Technology and Western Reserve University were not yet one. They were well known for an experiment done at Case measuring the motion of light through ether, which was the proposed medium for light at the time. In short, it didn't work. Uh, they published their results anywhere and it was embarrassing. So you should see the future directions portion of that article, I did read it. Uh, and yet, Albert Einstein recognized their contributions to the field of physics. Why? His open mind took those failed results and turned them into inspiration for a new theory of special relativity. So I leave you with this. Be confident and open to change. Do some cool science. Meet some cool people and enjoy your first year. Thank you. And that, my friends, is why I don't go after the students. <laughs> well done, Elios. Fantastic. <clears throat> A little bit of housekeeping. We're going to go take some pictures of the group. We'll be back jo uh, to join you in the reception outside. Um, we'll be back in a few minutes. <laughs>